Hey guys, it's Tyler here, back once again with another Assassin's Creed movie video. Now, there's been a great response from our reaction video and trailer breakdown, so I thank you all for that. But there's been a lot of questions and things like that that have left unanswered that people have for me, and in general, that I thought I'd do a separate video to answer some of those, clear some of them up, and kind of have a bit more of a discussion about them. As well as a couple of Easter eggs people wanted to add in that I also missed, so I thought maybe in videos as big as this, in terms of content, I can do actual follow-up videos like this and Q&As where I answer them. So let's get started. So the first question comes from a dat random name though, which he asked, thoughts on the new Animus? I kinda like it. Now I did bring it up a little bit in the Kill Connor Club trailer breakdown that's over on James's channel, I'll leave a link to that in the description. So I don't really like the new Animus design. I understand what its purpose is in terms of, you know, you're trying to be entertaining in terms of the modern day. You don't want to just have him sitting in a chair. Look, I get that to a certain extent. I also get the fact that it's better for the bleeding effect. I mean, it does make sense in terms of muscle memory doing things, and you're actually acting out the situations, and it gives you that freedom and mobility to do so. So sure, it does make sense. But it also leaves a bit more cons than, I think, having the regular Animus or Helix chairs and beds. Sure, you sit in them and it's not quite as entertaining or it's maybe doesn't make as much sense with the bleeding effect, though it'd all be brain muscle memory, like maybe just not, I don't know. I'm not really sure which one has more pros, but it does look a bit ridiculous and people even brought up weird scenarios like what if he's having sex, he'd just be jerking off in the middle of the room and they're like, I oh, know it's ridiculous. I'm like, it's not really actually that ridiculous when you think about it. That's a valid concern. What's he doing when he's taking a shit? He's sitting, everyone's looking at him in a circle like, oh, should we, should we look away? Like, what do we do? And then there's that one guy that's just watching intently, super into it. Like, uh, it's a valid concern. It looks a bit ridiculous in that sense. And you can't deny that that's a thing that's going to happen. He's reliving memories. We've seen some pretty weird shit go on when we relive memories of our ancestors in video games. Imagine what that could be like with this new Animus. I think it is a bit ridiculous, and I am not a huge fan of it, though I'm gonna wait to see the movie before I have a final judgement, of course, on it, but I'm a bit uneasy on it, and I would prefer the normal Animuses, or Animi, whatever you want to call it, to be back in the games. I don't want them to integrate this Animus into the game. It seems like a downgrade. I mean, you look into Abstergo, they were able to have a thousand Animuses in one room. This is like one whole facility building that they could fit one of those Crane Animuses into. Maybe it's a prototype, sure, but I just think it seems like a bit of a setback going backwards in terms of Animus technology, not uh, a progression. So another question from Jeremy Bobby, which is, what city do you think that is? So, a couple of people had this question, I mean, even I did when I was making the video, I wasn't entirely sure. So, the city is Seville, in southern Spain, in the Andalusia region. So, it's, it seems like quite a small-ish city, I mean, it has less than a million p people in its population, and that was in today's society. And I mean, the only way I really found it is because it wasn't really talked about as a city setting, because it's the modern day and the ancestors setting in the Spanish Inquisition and it hasn't really been mentioned as the major city setting like most of the video games have their cities as a major talking point. So it, was a, it became a point of I was talking to Ethan and James about it and Ethan was just listing of Spanish names of cities and I was googling them until we found that tower which is this, the Seville Cathedral uh, that's in the major trailer that everyone kind of knows that'll be I'm sure very iconic from the movie. I will do a separate video talking about Seville and the city, some of its history and things like that in the future, because I'd like to personally learn more about that city setting. It's one of my favourite parts about Assassin's Creed games and now the movie, is learning the history and culture of new places and cities, specifically Seville, in the movie. So in terms of other easter eggs people brought up, one, I, don't, I wouldn't really call it an easter egg I missed because it does come from one of my favourite shows, I just didn't bring it up, which is actually Ian M316 brings up, is that Jeremy Irons, who plays Alan Rickin, the CEO of Absurgo Industries that's in the movie, was actually playing Rodrigo Borgia in the Borgia's series on Showtime. They got three seasons, it's one of my favourite shows ever. And if you don't know, Rodrigo Borgia is the main villain in Assassin's Creed 2 
and his son Cesare in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood in during the Ezio trilogy. So they're major roles and figures. And sure, the Borgias isn't an actual Assassin's Creed based story, it's just based off the history of it. But it's just a cool, neat little Easter egg and kind of crossover, you could say, that's in this movie. So I thought that was really cool. And Jeremy Irons, he's such a masterful actor. So really excited to see him in the movie as well. M. Wangasami, I hope I didn't butcher that, also mentioned something I forgot and didn't know is that Aguilar's bow that's in the movie is actually designed off of Connor's bow from Assassin's Creed 3. So it's not, I don't see it as the same bow because he and Maria have the bow and so does Callum in the modern day. Sure, I mean, Absurga could have found it, but it's not actually Connor's bow, it's just based off the exact same design, which is a cool, neat little easter egg. I like that they added in. I mean, supposedly, the Ubisoft team gave the movie creators all of their weapon designs to kind of base stuff off and get an idea of what the Assassin's Creed weaponry looks like. Now, one of the major talking points of my easter egg breakdown was the, what I called the air wave. Uh, that was at the end of the trailer when Aguilar looked like he was synchronizing at the top of the Seville Cathedral. Now, there were a whole bunch of theories and responses. Some people just said, jump Tyler to lens flare. Some people said they thought he was synchronizing, and some people said they thought it might be his eagle vision powers that looks a bit less corny. You know, there's a whole bunch of different responses to this, and, you know, there's some validity to all of them. Now, I have some other theories. I said it was him synchronizing, which maybe it's a little ridiculous, but supposedly these assassins have some sort of special powers. Not magical, but abilities similar to Eagle Vision, I'd say. Now, the thing I think it is, is actually maybe the Animus loading. Now, I put this into perspective when you break down the trailer. When you see Callum Lynch go into the Animus for what looks like, anyway, the first time, after uh, Miss Rickon, Alan Rickon's daughter, I forget her first name, <laughs> god damn it, uh, she's saying, you know, this is what putting you animus, we want your past, and then it's straight away, the crane brings Callum up, and then you see his eyes widen like he's going into the animus, and from what I got from that is that the animus actually pulls him up because he starts off high up, and the animus loads, so perhaps the first time he's in the animus, or one of the times he loads into the animus, it's right when he's synchronizing and at the top of that tower. So you can imagine if you cut those shots together, it kind of all works as a way that it starts off, and that's the way that it's the animus loading. And I kind of thought that as well, because there's a sound effect of it in the trailer, but that could just be based through the music. So that's pretty much the main topics I wanted to talk about in this Q&A. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you guys heaps for watching. Be sure to subscribe if it's your first time. And there'll be plenty more Assassin's Creed movie videos on this channel in the future. So thank you guys, and I'll see you later.